Hello and welcome. I've always liked the idea of using a single doorway as both an entrance and an exit, but when a player walks through it a different mechanism is activated when they enter and when they leave. Now for a while I've had a simple way devised to do that and I'll show you that first, but I've always wanted a more advanced way to do it, a more complex, more foolproof way, and today I've finally gotten around to testing some stuff out and today we're going to be taking a look at a way that I've worked out to do just that. So as always we're going to start with the most simple example first and in this case we have a corridor with pressure plates on the floor and lamps on the side. If we walk through in one direction the lamps on that side activate. And if we walk through in the other direction obviously the lamps on that side will activate. We can keep getting consistent results provided that we move at a consistent speed. It's fairly simple because we're only using the concept that fences will attach to each other and to solid blocks that they're nearby but not to semi-transparent blocks such as this upside down half slab attached to a uh, stone brick block just to blend it in with the rest of the floor. Now if we threw items down on one side we can see that they will be able to fall through provided they actually make it and down below and because entities such as the player are just as viable to do that as items are as long as they're small enough we can use this to our advantage to make sure that as long as we're going fast enough we will go right over the other one over here as we're falling down because stairs are placed or uh, fences bring the player up half a uh, block higher and the pressure plate is at normal normal levels almost. So as long as we're going fast enough we will fall down while we're moving forward with our momentum and will fall beyond the pressure plate. The problem of course arises when we try to walk a bit too slow and then we fall down and we activate the wrong side. Obviously this is a bit of a problem in some adventure maps unless you're doing something rather innocent in case something messes up such as a uh, chime that plays a salutation when you enter or exit. In that case it's not a problem. All you'd have to do is wire it up like this, replacing one of the lamps we have here on either side. If you have a double wide you just uh, connect them down below, connect the uh, redstone, and you just place them like so, so that whenever you hit up the pressure plate it will activate either a peter or redstone. But of course if you want a bit more control you will need a bit more of a complex example, one that's a bit more foolproof and so that's what we'll get to now. I'll get to an even better example, an even more useful example here in a moment but first I want to show you this one because although this one has a little bit of problems as well it is very great for one by two, one block wide and two high corridors in your dungeons that you have plenty of room for redstone below the uh, pressure plates block and to the left and right of the pressure plates block. Really great for segregating the redstone lines and such so that you don't need to worry too much about that. And I'll get again to the uh, larger example later. But to demonstrate this one, if we move in the direction of this arrow to the left here, it'll light up, but if we move to the right, it won't and we can get consistent results in this case as well, but it's a lot more foolproof. Now it operates on the idea that we have a short pulse here, which is immediately turned off, so whenever we step on this pressure plate, this pulse will only fire ever once, while as, whereas the uh, pressure plate on the side we aren't supposed to be coming from, the one that won't activate whatever mechanism that we want to activate for that specific direction, will be giving a continuous pulse. Now you see this pulse uses a 4 tick delay, so we want to make sure this one also has a delay of about equal magnitude. You can actually decrease these delays a little bit and get away with it, but just for safety purposes I kept it this way for, you know, just this example. Now once we have this pulse sent out, this pulse as I said will be continuous. So if we go into this and step on it, this pulse will be active, and if we step on this one, we are stepping on both of them and this one has already sent its one single pulse that it will ever send. So even if we were to step off of this plate here on our way through, it won't actually activate anything because this side has already sent its one pulse. So if we go through it, or you have to still wait a little bit for the, the delay to reset itself, but if you go through it, it activates and then if we go through the other way, it won't. And on the other side I've just mirrored that and uh, it's the same exact thing and you can then probably make this a bit more compact but I've laid it out straight so that you can see it a bit better 
and so it goes through and then into essentially an AND gate or whatever this is called. Anyway, we have this thing constantly going in here, which doesn't need to be inverted because as long as this is on, it uh, will prevent this from turning on. And then whenever this goes on, it will turn this off, which will turn this off, which will turn this on. Essentially, you can just copy it if you want, and you can pause the video here to do so rather than hearing me ramble. Okay, and then now, again, this has its own problems, and mainly the problem is if you want one that is uh, larger than too wide, uh, a corridor, or you want a corridor that is much higher, you'll have issues with people either jumping over the uh, jumping over the pressure plates entirely, or you won't have enough room for your redstone. So for that, we'll get to the third example. And in this example, we're not even using pressure plates at all. Instead, we're using tripwire hooks and string because they can be fairly long, and you can place them higher above the ground so that the players can't jump over them. And just to make sure, if you have really high walls or you know really big portcullis gates or something, you can uh, place tripwire hooks even further up so that you have multiple layers of detection. So the, the uh, wiring behind it is exactly the same but a bit more compact. You know we have the side that's sending the pulse, same thing, and then it's going around and into our uh, gate here along with the same constant pulse here from the other uh, other tripwire hook. The only difference is where we're getting the power from because we're getting it from the side of the block here rather than hiding wires underneath blocks or you know whatnot because we can simply build walls around this. Uh, so just to give it a demonstration if I were to walk through this side uh, that light there would light up and if I walk through the other side this light would light up. So if I go through that lights up we go through the other way it doesn't. If we go through slightly diagonally, it lights up. If we go diagonally backward, it doesn't. And the same thing with this side. It doesn't work that way, but it does work that way. Again, very consistent, and you can tweak any values you need uh, to suit player speed if you have really fast potions or something. And just to make sure that uh, it has been properly shown that this is quite possible, we can run through it and it will still activate. Even with sprinting with a speed 2, it still works fine. If we run through the other way, it does not activate. Just to sort of prove that that is entirely possible. Now, um, I know it's been a while since I made this video, but I've been kind of busy this semester because I do take college courses and they've been uh, taking a lot of my time along with some of the great games that have also been taking a lot of my time recently that have been released. So um, maybe a while before my next video as well. Uh, and also for my uh, developer videos for my games. But otherwise, I will see you next time.